Hello, my Nakamatachi. This is Joy Girl, and I know that I said in my last chapter review that I wanted to come out with episode two of Let's Talk Wano so that we can discuss some of the things that was revealed in the latest chapter, chapter 1011. But something else actually caught my attention, which I wanted to discuss first. So we're going to hold off on episode two, um, but I do have another interesting discussion here for you guys today. And I thought I wanted to keep these style of, you know, more casual um, video style discussions. I'm quite enjoying it and it seemed like a lot of you guys were enjoying it too. It actually got me thinking that I might want to start doing streams. Um, so let me know what you guys think of that and, you know, whether uh, a stream would be something that you'd be interested in. You know, leave a comment below. But anyways, admin stuff over. Actually, before that should also mention that I think this video will be most likely spoiler free, but I will warn you guys if for, you know, for any um, anime only viewers, whether we're going to start discussing spoilers. I won't make any promises like I did in the last video where I ended up making a mistake. So no promises, but I don't believe that there will be any spoilers. And anyways, I'll warn you guys if there is. Anyways, so admin stuff over. So the thing that I wanted to talk to you about today was, I guess, sort of a reveal an inadvertent reveal, which came out as a result of the Funimation watch party of episodes 969 and 970, which happened just, um, you know, the past weekend. I'd actually never watched any of these watch parties before, but it did come up on my um, newsfeed, on my Twitter newsfeed, and I saw that they were having interviews with some of the voice actors as well as the director of the anime. So I actually went back and watched the, um, watched the interview segments in that stream. And Funimation, for those of you who don't know, is a streaming website where you can watch, uh, you know, animes online. And so Funimation was actually hosting a watch party, which was actually co-hosted by Rogers Base. And they also included interviews with the voice actors of Luffy and the voice actor of Zoro. So that's Mayumi Tanaka and Nakai Kazuya, as well as the director of the animation. And his name is Tatsuya Nagamine. And apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. I'm so sorry, guys. But all of those interviews were really Really, really delightful to watch and so if you guys haven't seen it this is joy girl sending you guys over that way to watch the funimation watch party you know once you guys are done with this video but the topic that i actually wanted to talk about today in today's discussion is actually something that the director of the anime said sort of what tatsuya revealed in his section of the interview and it's actually really funny that this came out now because not even a full week ago i discussed in one of my videos how it seemed like Oda may have given some hints and given some notes to the um to the anime team about the future developments that's going to happen in the series and how it might be possibly being hinted throughout the animation and then the director go went ahead and said something that pretty much confirmed that that is true and in his interview, Tatsuya says that there's lots of things to look forward to in the um in the land of Wano and that includes the big fight against Kaido and then also the fight against the big enemy of the arc. And I was like, what? What? The big enemy of the arc? Like, my brain just came to a stop. What does that mean? I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like pretty huge news to me. What it seems like he's saying is that Kaido isn't the final enemy within the Wano arc, and that we are actually going to be seeing a bigger enemy after Kaido. And if that's not crazy, then I don't know what is. But in retrospect, it also seems like it might be connected to some other comments that we've seen over the years. And by that, I'm referring to Oda's comments in the Jump Fiesta 2018. And he said something along the lines of that there's a lurking legend lying dormant who we're going to be introduced to in Wano, and that maybe he's going to be connected to Whitebeard. And though I am aware that that comment sparked a huge discussion back then, that has largely subsided by now. The fact that that comment um, was made before the Wano arc began, and then, you know, in the Wano arc, we were actually properly introduced to Kaido, who, you know, is a legend as the strongest creature in the world, as well as having a close connection to Whitebeard, that seemed to have laid the comment pretty much to rest. And if it wasn't Kaido, then people thought that it might be Rox de Zebek, and, you know, whom both, um, whom we've been introduced to both in the manga and in the anime now and so the fact that rocks again someone who is a lurking legend as well as someone connected to whitebeard and someone that we met in the wano arc sort of made us feel that okay this lurking legend we've already met and sort of the discussion surrounding who this could be has sort of been laid to rest but seeing this interview with tatsuya has for me anyways reinvigorated this interest 
And I'm actually surprised that this isn't being talked about more. I'm not too sure if it's because people haven't been watching the Funimation Watch Party, but I just think that this is a huge news. You know, for me, it's raised the question of whether, you know, we're going to see another lurking legend in Wano, and whether Kaido isn't actually the final enemy, and we're going to see another enemy after, you know, the Straw Hats and the Alliance beat Kaido in this arc. And if we do see another enemy, then that means that that threat has to be pretty much bigger than Kaido is, because, you know, that's just how Shonen works. You know, the enemies just get stronger. But Kaido is already known to be the strongest creature in the world. And you know, maybe that might even be the tragedy of Act 3. So maybe Luffy defeats Kaido in Act 3. And then the tragedy is, is that after Kaido is defeated, a new enemy shows up. You know, maybe he even defeats Luffy and the entire alliance, you know, leaving us in a sort of similar situation to another anime, another anime concerning demons and a train, which I won't spoil too much of, but you know, if you know, you know. But anyways, for One Piece, let's look at some candidates who I think this comment could be made in reference to. So firstly, the Marines. The reason why I bring up the world government is because the events and sort of the situation at Wano seems to be quite closely related to the world government. You know, we've seen the world government pop up, you know, just before the Wano arc started, you know, with the Reverie. And then between Acts 2 and 3, we got an update on sort of the events which happened at the Reverie, which again concerned the world government. And, you know, even within Wano, we've actually seen the presence of the world government, you know, through the presence of CP0, as well as S.W.O.R.D., uh, you know, a secret military organization. Although in saying that we have seen on you know a number of times they've stated multiple times that the world government just simply don't have the resources to become involved in Wano at the moment and that sort of seems to be the main factor why it didn't seem like the world government is um is someone to be is is a force to be expected during the Wano arc but then what if actually this has been stated to throw us off you know um even though the world government might not have the resources right now at the end of this Onigashima raid we'll actually see a situation where both sides of the alliance will have their armies and will have their um, forces depleted to sort of a situation where the world government can, you know, swoop in. And for anime-only viewers, you guys are going to have to skip a tiny bit ahead. So, you know, please um, skip ahead to the time on the screen. For everyone else, you know, this is something that CP0 actually mentioned in a recent chapter that, you know, that they're waiting for um, both the Straw Hats and the Alliance as well as Kaido's um, crew to, you know, finish each other off. And maybe this is actually the situation that we're going to see where the world government makes it, you know, makes it a perfect time, makes it a perfect opportunity for the world government to swoop in. And, or, actually what we also could see is that maybe the secret weapons that the world government has been working on is actually such a huge success that they do actually have enough manpower, enough force, enough resources to become involved at Wano. And I think there's actually a good reason for the world government to come to Wano, which is that we actually might see some of the world's histories and some of the world's mysteries become revealed by the end of this arc. And that is something that's really going to compel them to become involved. And I think that's actually quite likely. You know, we've known for a while that Wano is quite closely related to some of the secrets and to some of the mysteries that's going on in the world. Um, and if there's one thing that's pretty certain that we're going to find out is, you know, why Wano's borders were closed off from the world, which sort of by, you know, necessary implication means that we're also going to have to find out something about the world itself. And that is actually something else that Tatsuya seems to have sort of revealed in his interview. Because in his interview, he does actually say that there are many things which he can't actually discuss, but which will be rapidly revealed, and that he thinks that we're going to find out um, the relationship between Wano and the rest of the world. And so again, I think that means we are going to find out something about the world of One Piece, and if we do see that happen, then I think that's actually going to render you know, the world government to a situation where they can no longer ignore Wano, and they will actually have to come and become involved, sort of in a similar way way that they had to in Ohara when they sort of um, when they became a threat to revealing and unveiling the world's secrets. And if the world government actually does come to Wano, then this of course has huge implications about you know the future of One Piece as a series and who our final enemy is going to be. And, and by that, I mean the final enemy of One Piece as a series, not just at Wano. But before we get carried on with the idea of the world government appearing at Wano, there is one thing that I think I should mention, which sort of goes against um, the idea of why they might show up, and that has to do with Oda's comments. So 
Apart from Tatsuya's comments uh, in the recent interview, Oda in Jump Fiesta in 2018 said that, called this lurking legend a lurking legend for one, but also that he was connected to Whitebeard. And I don't know if we can consider the world government a lurking legend, maybe unless we see some specific world government official, you know, one specific marine who might be considered a lurking legend, but otherwise I wouldn't really think that's a term that quite aptly fits the world government as a whole, and also the connection to Whitebeard. I mean, yeah, the world government does have a connection to Whitebeard, but it's not something that's super strong that I think would compel Oda to make a comment like that. And of course, there is the possibility that, you know, the person whom Oda was referring to and then, um, you know, what Tatsuya was referring to are two different things. You know, for example, if it's true that either Kaido or Zebek is the character whom Oda was referring to, then we still might see that, you know, um, the world government might be the big enemy that was mentioned in Tatsuya's interview. But, you know, for the sake of today's discussion, let's suppose that Oda and Tatsuya were talking about the same figure or the same characters just because <laughs> then there are just so, so many characters we're going to have to consider. So on that note, let's look at some other possible candidates. And the next one that I want to talk about is Blackbeard. So even in some of my other videos, I've seen people commenting about the possibility of Blackbeard showing up at Wano. And I think similar to the world government, I think Blackbeard and his story development has been quite relevant and has been shown to be yeah quite relevant to the Wano arc. Again, you know, before Wano, we saw Blackbeard. And then even between the acts, again, we saw Blackbeard and his recent actions. And I think the possibility of Blackbeard coming to Wano seems to be based on the idea that Blackbeard is looking for another Devil Fruit power. You know, we know that he is able to host more than one Devil Fruit. And based off his Jolly Roger, which has three heads, the popular idea seems to be that he is looking for a third Devil Fruit. And, you know, he already has a Logia, he already has a Paramecia. So, you know, what would be more perfect than to finish off the trifecta with a Zoan Devil Fruit and, you know, Kaido's... Devil Fruit is a very overwhelmingly strong Zoan Devil Fruit. So coming and taking Kaido's Zoan Devil Fruit would, you know, finish that trifecta quite nicely. So in that sense, there is something which we could tie in as a possible motivation for him coming to Wano. And I think Blackbeard is a character who can fit the descriptions both um both that Tatsuya gave as well as Oda's. So, you know, in terms of Tatsuya's comment, I think Blackbeard would be considered a very big enemy. You know, he's been portrayed to be, you know, one of the final enemies for Luffy. And then if we think about it according to Oda's comments, you know, Blackbeard definitely does have a connection to Whitebeard um, as, you know, a former crewmate. But then there's the idea of a lurking legend, and I don't know whether Blackbeard would quite fit into that category. Unless we consider him to be the reincarnation of Rox D. Zebek. And, you know, you, um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I have made a video dis discussing Zebek and possibly Blackbeard's connection to him. So, you know, feel free to check that one out after this video. But for now, that actually brings us to our next candidate, who is Rox D. Zebek. So this legendary character would actually really very well fit the description that Oda gave as a lurking legend, as well as someone connected to Whitebeard, as Zebek was the former captain of both, you know, Kaido and Whitebeard. So I think that would actually fit Oda's comments quite well, and again would fit Tatsuya's comments if he was the big enemy, because we know Zebek to have been a really, really hard and tough opponent, needing both Garp and Roger to defeat him. Now, most fans accepted that his introduction in the Wano arc, you know, told through sort of the tales of Sengoku, sort of fit already and sort of already satisfied Oda's comments back, um, back from Jump Fiesta that we're going to be introduced to this legendary character. And I've always sort of been on the fence with that one. But now with Tatsuya's comments, I'm thinking even more about the possibility that Rox D. Zebek isn't dead at all. Like I said, I made a video about Rox D. Zebek, and in that video, I also discussed, you know, the possibility of Zebek being alive. Um, and so I would recommend that you guys to go, recommend you guys to go and watch that video, because I'm not going to go through all the details as to why I think it's possible that he might be alive in today's discussion. Um, and there are actually quite a few, you know, interesting details, even some, you know, things about a possible real-life character, a possible real-life pirate whom Oda may have drawn inspiration from, which could hint as to Zebek's survival, um, as well as, again, like I mentioned, the possible connection between Blackbeard and Zebek. So please feel free to go watch that video, but in any case, for today's discussion, I think Zebek, again, really fits the, dis um, really fits the descriptions of both Oda as well as Tatsuya. 
But in saying that, like I said earlier, there's no real guarantee that Oda and Tatsuya were talking about the same person or about the same character. So it's very well possible that, you know, we're going to see someone completely different. You know, maybe the world government, maybe someone else. Um, but I would be interested in knowing what, in hearing what you guys have to say on the topic. So, you know, please leave a comment below. And there is actually also the chance that the translation of the watch party might have been off itself. So whilst the director's comments was translated to be a big enemy of the arc, um, maybe it's possible that he actually meant saga or, you know, just the ending part of the series. I know that before SBS 97 was, re uh, was released, you know, um, some maybe late last year, some of the leaks translated uh, a Shonen Jump message which said that One Piece is heading towards the final arc. And then, you know, with the official release, it was actually revealed that that wasn't exactly what Oda meant, that it was just the ending part, sort of the last saga, the last sort of um, the last moments, the last sort of leg of One Piece. That's where we're heading towards. And so it's possible that maybe Tatsuya's message was about more just the final enemy of the series, not of Wano itself. So this is just one of those moments where I really wish that I spoke Japanese so that I could find out exactly what uh, the director meant. And so if you guys could help on that matter, that would be really great too because if he didn't mean the arc then that probably does mean that Kaido will remain our final villain but if he actually did mean the arc then again that would likely mean that Kaido isn't our final villain for this arc and that we are going to be seeing someone else at Wano which just you know blows my brains um, because that also just changes so much and so much of the expectations that I had about this arc. But anyways, that's just some of my thoughts, um, you know, my crazy brain going again after watching the director's interview. Even without the director's comments though, that Funimation watch party was quite, uh, was really enjoyable to watch. Both the voice actors, Mayumi and Nakai, were really great, you know, provided a lot of interesting detail and insight into, you know, what goes, be what goes on behind the scenes of the animation, gave us some really fun reenactments as well as a as well as a um a Dragon Ball reference to those of you guys who like Dragon Ball and as well as information about you know how um how the Kabuki theater actually really influenced the Wano arc which I found really interesting so yeah like I said go feel free to watch that as well and I think that brings us to the end of today's discussion so please let me know what you think, you know, are you going as crazy as I am about this new reveal, you know, about this possible new reveal? Leave me your comments below and feel free to watch some of the other videos that I mentioned during this discussion if you guys haven't watched them already. And please like and share this video and of course don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because we do have a One Piece chapter break this week and I would be more than happy to fill your chapter void with more One Piece discussions. So that's it from me. This is Joy Girl. I'll see you again soon.